We're in the book of Galatians, chapter 6. We'll begin in verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Got to thinking about that por portion of scripture, and uh, Lord really put me under some conviction on that, because I've talked many times about the thing of sin. Uh, most preachers will avoid the issue of sin because it tends to get people upset and people don't tithe as much, uh, just to be frank with you. But um, for those preachers that do speak against sin, we understand something. And I've preached this for so many years now, and that is that all sin is negative. Obviously, you know, whatever the Bible condemns, if you do it, if you mess with it, it is going to hurt you. It's not good. But uh, that portion of scripture there in Galatians chapter 6, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man, uh, I'm forgetting the wording now, um, if you sow to the flesh, you will to the flesh reap corruption. Um, for whatsoever, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. A temporary lapse of uh, memory there. Um, because I'm trying to think of what I was going to say here. But there's a sense, and this is kind of a rough thing to say, but there's a sense in which when you sin as a Christian, and that's who it's written to, it's not talking about lost people. Um, you can apply it to a lost person. But uh, there's a sense in when, when you sin as a Christian, you are essentially mocking God. Because if you know that you're not supposed to do a certain thing and you do it, you go against the scriptures, you're mocking God. Hard thing to accept, a hard thing to think about, but it's there. If you sow to the flesh as a Christian, the Bible says, if um, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So when you sin as a Christian, you are planting a seed. You are saying, I'm going to sow to my flesh. And the problem is I get contacted by people that have sown to their flesh all their li lives for many years. And all of a sudden now it's uh, the time of reaping has come. Now you start to pay for that sin that you've reaped or sown all those years. And, um, and reaping can be kind of a rough thing sometimes. Reaping is not always fun. Uh, a lot of the issues that I struggle with are because of many years of sin. You say, well, no, but brother, when, when the Lord saves you, your sin's all gone. It's, it's all paid for. Well, eternally, yes, that's true. But the Bible does go on to talk about, you know, uh, the wages of sin is death. And uh, you say, well, that's, that's eternal death. Well, it's eternal death, but it's also physical death. If I go out and I get, you know, drunk every night and I mess around on my wife and whatever else, I'm going to pay for those sins. It isn't just a thing of, well, you know, it's all paid for at the cross. I get a, you know, you get saved and God gives you a, you can now sin for free card. And uh, whatever sins you want to do, Brian, you can just do them without any conviction of conscience or whatever else. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, everybody will sin. I get that. I understand. I'm not trying to teach sinless perfection. I get accused of that many times. I'm never going to teach it. It's nonsense. I know better than to say that I'm sinlessly perfect. I'm not. But what I do teach is that you should definitely fight against sin. You should definitely think about sin and say, you know what? I don't want to do that. Um, don't watch Hollywood movies. All right, Hollywood movies are very wicked. They're made by people that hate Jesus Christ. They're made by people that hate even our country, America. Um, they're some of the most wicked, evil people, moral degenerates, are in Hollywood. And yet I see these modern Christians and they just talk about movies. You know, I remember I went to a, my oldest brother's church years ago. And um, we're there and a the guy said, about when he was in Alaska, and he said, this one time I went out there and I looked out over the beautiful mountains and he said, it just reminded me, and I thought, of the verse of scripture, 
Well, he said it reminded me from that scene from Dances with Wolves. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, huh? You know? Uh, you're reminded of a Hollywood movie when you see God's creation. Uh, check yourself. Uh, again, I see these modern Christians and they, you know, they're just, oh, they're so nice and they're, they smile and they just have life as all just a, a wonderful thing for them. And, oh, it's just so, I'm mean, so excited about Jesus. You know, they do the Jesus thing. Uh, I'm just so excited. Oh, it's such a good life. And I'll sit here with my wife and we'll do, we'll both smile. And we'll have nice, you know, things. I saw this comment the other day and they said, why do King James only people always seem mad about something? They always seem angry. <laughs> well, because we are angry. We're mad at this uh, wicked world. I'm mad at the devil. When you understand reality, when you live in reality, in the real world, you get mad at things. You know, you say, hey, you know what? I don't particularly like this thing and I don't particularly like that and whatever else. We know the reality of this world. We know the reality of this life. We don't, we aren't con going to say, oh, there's nothing to it and oh, everything's just great and it's getting, only going to get better from here, folks. We're looking to good times and whatever. No, we're not. No, we're not. Uh, I mean, heaven, yeah. Uh, a thousand year kingdom of Jesus Christ on the earth, yes. Walking right into the sunlight here. Very bright, especially with the snow in front of me. But, um, I mean, you know, I'm positive. I, I do understand the positive aspects of the scriptures, certainly. But you can't just, you know, the problem with modern churchianity is they, it's all positive and it's very little negative. But that's not what the Bible teaches. They go against the scriptures. Um, and you have to look at the Galatians chapter 6 and say, you know what? If I have some issues that are the result of my sin in the past, then I just have to deal with that. Um, you know, Christianity is not uh, only you know, some kind of a thing of life enhancement and and it's here to, to give you a much better life and whatever else. Your best life now, that's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. You will struggle with sin. You will struggle with uh, people hating you. I mean, let me ask you a question out there. If you're a modern Christian, you're just coming to these videos and starting to think a little bit. Is the devil upset at you? Does the devil have some people that are trying to get you? Is there some reason why the devil would like to see you dead? Because if the answer is, well, I don't really think so, well, then you better check yourself. We are at war with Satan and his minions. There's a lot of people, the vast I mean, the Bible teaches the vast majority of people go to hell. The vast majority of people are going to serve the devil. And uh, you look at the ministry of Jesus Christ when he was here on the earth, uh, he was hated. That's why they crucified him. Um, he had people following him wherever he went. Uh, I get that myself. <laughs> you know, people follow what my videos are and things and just listen to any little thing that they can so that they can report me to YouTube and get my channel shut down. There are Christian, King James only, ministries out there that have literally said, report Brian Denlinger to YouTube or to whoever you can to try to get him in trouble. Try to shut me down. I've had to deal with that stuff for years. You will too if you're genuinely saved. But uh, be very critical of yourself. Not to the point where you're just, you know, cast down and you're saying, oh man, I just, I'm miserable and I'm ruined and I'm just, oh, and you never, you know, don't get anything done. No, but you need to be critical of yourself. You need to make sure that you judge yourself. The Bible says uh, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Um, make sure that you are very, uh, that you examine yourself and make sure that you get sin out of your life. Uh, if you sin, not, excuse me, not if you sin, when, when you sin, um, get it confessed. Confess it, forsake it, move on. It's very important. And you will live a victorious life, brethren. When the more you fight against sin, the more uh, your life will improve. And you'll see, wow, this really is God's way. It really is a sweet thing to live for the Lord and to depart from evil. And not mess around with sin. So, just a real quick little video here this morning. And uh, as I continue to go through, through some scriptures, 
like I said, I'll probably be doing these fairly frequently, and um, we'll see. But uh, I'd like to request some prayer here um, for something, and that is that uh, we got a, a cheap used vehicle, bought it on eBay because I don't really like to buy much from Maine because it's everything's so badly rusted up here if it's a number of years old. Well, I was saying about our Jeep Cherokee having problems, and um, we still have it. Thankfully, I didn't get rid of it yet because the vehicle we got is a 2003 Chevy Tracker. I know some people are saying, why don't you buy a Japanese you know, Toyota or Honda or something? Well, I didn't want to spend the money on something like that right now. And, um, you know, I already have an old Tracker, which you probably saw while I was walking over there. Um, and so we have parts. It's a 2003 Tracker. The newer one is a 2003 Tracker, but a lot less miles, and I thought in pretty good shape. Well, just got the thing inspected, and I was driving it around, and it's, you know, driving down the road, and it's cruising along, and it's like that, like it's trying to, like there's something clogging the fuel line or something is what it seems like. It's like a fuel problem, I thought. Um, and then it'll sit there, though, when you have it in park, and it idles perfectly, just, just stays right about 1,000 RPMs. But then when you put it in gear, it starts to go like that, and it'll, it'll shut off. Sometimes it's like the engine stalls. Brand new air filter, brand new oil change. Um, I put gas line antifreeze in it just to think maybe it's got some ice in the tank or something. Uh, so right now I have an appointment at a garage. I don't have a whole lot of time to just experiment with things, you know, and try fixing this, try fixing that. So if you could please pray about that. I hope we didn't get a bad vehicle. The guy had a 100% approval rating, the dealer, on uh, eBay. So <sighs> all these little things. I mean, the devil knows how to attack me. I'll tell you what. Just constantly putting little things like this on me just to keep me distracted. And, you know, and I mean, it's snowing here. It's, it's winter time. I need a reliable vehicle. I can't have something that's going to let me sit someplace. You know, that's a very bad thing up here. It was three degrees, you know, this morning, you know, Fahrenheit. It's very cold. So if you could please pray about that situation, it's, you know, we try to do things as affordably as possibly, possible with, and stay out of debt. But, uh, boy, sometimes it's trying. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, so please do pray about it. Um, I think it, you know, I remember I had a little S10 the one time years ago, and I think it was some kind of O2 sensor or something like that. It was some kind of a thing that went, you know, in the exa exhaust manifold or whatever else, and it was doing a similar thing. So I don't know if that could be the issue. I mean, I've only had the thing for about a week now, and it's already giving us trouble. So I'm hoping and praying that um, it isn't anything major, some kind of major thing. It's going to be, oh, it's actually, you know, not going to run for you or not going to work and I have to you know try to get the money back from eBay or something and go for another vehicle or uh, that would not be good you know I'm not going to just oh we'll just go down to the local dealership and buy whatever I want no no uh, not doing that so if you could please pray about that I would greatly appreciate it so hope this video has been a little bit of a challenge to you uh, hopefully You'll do your best to fight against sin. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.